G'day guys and girls, are you a photographer that loves to get the best bang for buck for your gear? Well I reckon I've got a tripod just for you, the Genesis C3 carbon fibre tripod. I think it's an absolute beauty and I'm going to tell you why today, so stick around and roll that intro. G'day guys and girls and thank you for joining me today. It's beautiful to see your smiling faces once again on this absolutely cracker day here in Slovenia, talking all about the Genesis C3 carbon fiber tripod. A tripod I never heard about one month ago and probably you've never heard about also. But that's why I'm here to introduce this absolutely beast of machine to you. But before we get into that, if you're new to this channel, I'm Matthew Storer, a travel and landscape photographer from Australia, traveling to least explored countries around the world, showcasing the beauty and diversity through my photography on this channel. So if that interests you guys, just head down to this little button here and subscribe for future content. But why am I bringing this to your attention today? It's small, it's very well built, and for me, it's one of the best bang for bucks on the market right now for carbon fiber tripods. And if you're anything like me, I love getting a bang for buck. This is what this tripod is. But about a month ago, the only thing I used was the Rolly carbon fiber tripod that's being filmed with right now. It's tiny, it's pretty poorly made, it's carbon fiber. I'll be honest with you, it's just a hunk of crap. I never should have purchased it. I'm a big believer when purchasing cars, camera gear, whatever, to buy right the first time and don't buy it twice. That's what I've done. So I'm here to introduce you this tripod so you're not making the same mistakes I am. But I went down to photo click my local camera store here in Slovenia. And guys, just quickly, make sure you go down and shop at your local camera store because they give you local advice, they keep the shop fronts open, they keep jobs in business, which is most important. And they introduce you to new products, just like they did for me for the Genesis tripod, which is super, super cool. So make sure you shop locally, it's very, very important. Secondly, just quickly to get it straight off the bat, this is not a paid sponsorship by Genesis. They have no idea I'm doing this, so every bit of word that comes out of my mouth is the crap that comes out of my mouth, not sponsored at all. So let's just clear that up straight away. But let's get straight into this review about, you know, the Genesis C3 carbon fiber tripod to the Manfrotto that I was already using for about five or six years. This is a 400 euro tripod, quite expensive, I will be honest, but as I said, I've been using it for six years now. So when you cut that over each year and I'm getting paid for my photography, it's sort of okay. The price of this, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm, not, I'm gonna wait till the end. I'm gonna run it down from top to bottom, all through the features. Now I want you guys to let me know how much you would pay for it, and then secondly, how much do you think it is? They're very different things. You wouldn't pay the same as what you think. I wouldn't pay 400 euros again for this because of this. Just keep that in mind. But straight off the bat, cosmetically, first impressions matter. This is a pretty good unit straight out of the box. You know, three colors, carbon fiber, green, and black. Pretty subdued, you know, pretty easy going. This has got all the bells and whistles hanging off of it. Carbon fiber, the typical Manfrotto red, and about 4,000 knobs hanging off of it. Initially, this didn't bother me before I purchased this, but all these knobs hanging off everywhere, you know, it does get caught in my backpack, or when you're walking through planes, you're all sorry, you just gotta be really careful all these knobs. But when I got this, it was so smooth, exterior-wise, it's a really good impression for me, first straight out of the box. Starting off with the Arca Swiss plate. Now this comes with the Manfrotto, traditional Manfrotto base plate, which I threw straight in the bin and replaced it with a carbon fiber, uh, replaced it with the Arca Swiss plate, sorry. So that's an extra like 15 pounds I had to pay for there. Straight out of the box, 35 mil base plate with a leveling spirit on the front of the knob and also the front of the base plate. So 15 pounds already I had to pay extra just to get that base plate. Now, for you bigger DSLR users out there, this would be no problem. Even though it's 35 mil, it's very thick, very well made, it'd be no problem whatsoever. Moving straight as the ball head. This is, for me, one of the biggest differences because when I pick this up, this just wants to fall forward like no tomorrow, where this weight distribution is very good on this. That's because of the ball head. It's very small, very lightweight, and very well made. Now, I won't be honest with you, the Manfrotto definitely is better made. A lot of people comment on this ball head how sturdy it is. It's built like an absolute brick shit house and that's for purpose. But on this, it's still got the swivel uh, panoramic plate, but it's very similar built to the Siri units. Whatever you say it's Siri, Siri, whatever. It's so just with a one knob. So a lot more mainstream, streamlined compared to this, definitely. But on here, it's got a tension knob on the main knob. And what this allows you to do is adjust how much you want to loosen it and also tighten it. So if you're changing between like a telephoto where you want to make sort of small, minute adjustments, you can adjust the te tension uh, knob here. 
But I found for me personally, once I found the sweet spot of that, I've never had to adjust it anymore. I have to readjust it, I just, I just stuffed it up. But that's super simple for me, I really, really like it. And when she's fully locked down, nothing's gonna move that. Even for you big DSI users, that's not gonna move. Even for such a small ball head, I was very, very impressed. We'll see how that goes over time because that might change things. Like I said, five years on, this is still not missing the beat out of the box. Getting onto the neck of the tripod, this is where things change a lot. This has got a few features that I absolutely love about it, which I'm gonna to touch on in a minute. But this has got a leveling base. Another additional payment that I paid was 130 euros for this leveling base straight out of the box. You can head up here and watch this. Why I love this leveling base for the Manfrotto. I'll be honest with you, it's one additional product for this Manfrotto that I just can't see me you know, living without this tripod just because of that. You can get a leveling base for this, but it introduces in between the neck and the obviously ball head, so it increases that overall height once folded down. So a little bit of an issue where I had just replaced the neck of this and it's an absolutely favorite of mine, I love it. But when I went over to this, it's so, you know, so well built, there's no do flackies hanging off here. So you can just unloosen this and extend it out. There's no knobs hanging around, nothing to get caught on. I really like that fact. So I've basically got the best of both worlds out of both tripods. I think I prefer this system better because there's nothing going on and I can't you know, get something caught on. Also when it's really cold and your fingers just aren't working well, this is really simple to use compared to this. This is how I personally feel. There's two other features I wanna talk about this, but they're the best for me. I wanna get back to them, they're the best for me. So now the legs of the tripod. Everyone loves a bit of legs. Straight out of the box, when I, when I wanna undo these legs, especially when you've got gloves on, it's really cold and they start freezing over, I really have to turn these legs quite a lot to move it up, which is no real issue because it's all I knew of. It didn't really bother me for quite a long time. It just, you, know, you just have to go a little bit longer and then move it around. Also, the actual legs, the carbon fiber legs of the tripod, they're a bit skinnier on the Manfrotto. I used to have an O55 carbon fiber series, still a three section, and that was similar diameter to this. So it's, this is quite a bit thicker, and that also reflects a lot when you extend the bottom legs. That's a lot thicker than the Manfrotto, and when you're on that uneven surface, you're gonna get that bottom flex out of the tripod, which is really, really cool. When fully extended, I'm about six foot. So when I fully extend these legs, the Genesis tripod is much more El Naturel to me to look at through the viewfinder, which is pretty important. I have to bend my back. As I said, I don't wanna move this neck up and introduce any movement into it. So as far as wind, the movement I mean. So that for me is a really good feature. When I extend this tripod up with the neck, you know, it's way too high for me. There's never really been a situation where I've ever needed to use that, but who knows, maybe one day there is. But this has got a, a bigger plate, so a bigger um, rubber grip here, and also the grooves are a bit thicker. So when you just crack this, you only have to move it maybe one eighth. When I first done it, I really wrenched on it and almost broke the bloody thing. So much easier, just that little bit of a turn, perfect. Like, it was, it was a huge difference to me when I noticed it. It's small things, especially when your hands are freezing, you're in the Arctic and it's minus 16. Yeah. Just that little one eighth crack and she's up. Absolutely beautiful. Moving on to the feet. This has got like brand new Nikes on it. Just pull this tab off. Look at that, it's got spikes straight out of the camera. They're about 20 mils, so just under an inch for you Americans out there. But straight out of the box with spikes. That is, that is a fantastic feature, especially on conditions like this. I've got snow, but underneath this, I've got a layer of ice because obviously it's frozen over. So when I just take that off and stick it in there, that's absolutely fantastic. Oh, if I can get it out now. Absolutely fantastic. One other feature about this is, if any of you people out there do some landscape photography and also some wildlife photography, I've now got a duopod and a monopod. You know, so I probably won't ever use this, but there are some people out there that may use this. Maybe in a couple of years, I'll use it as a walking stick, get that bloody old, I might need it. But also another thing is that I really thought about the other day as well, I was doing a bit of a river crossing. I thought, you know, if I was carrying this tripod and a bit of extra gear in my hands, I could almost take this off and just use it on the tripod as a little bit more stability crossing that river. I don't know, it's something I wanna test out. Maybe the legs aren't strong enough on it or maybe it's dangerous, I don't know, but you know, it's something to test out. It could be quite a, quite a good idea. But overall, the legs, I have to say, get the wind out of this tripod. It's, it's lighter, but as I said, the big test for me will be four or five years time how it still stands up because this, I almost say it's brand new. Apart from that sticker, it's had its all wear and tear, but it still works as good as the Dow got it. That's a very important feature and why you pay a lot of money. So we'll see in four or five years time how this stacks up. 
But I want to get back onto those other two cool features. So any of you macro photographers out there, or people that want to shoot upside down, you Aussies on the other side of the world, this is a really cool thing. So you can take the ball head off, you can take this base plate off, just loosen that little bad boy there, and this will drop out. Now another really cool thing in, in here, it has got a groove, so basically you have to put that in the right way, otherwise it just won't keep free spinning. So you see it won't spin now. So you can obviously latch that on there and you can shoot macro, you can shoot to the ground, whatever it is. Or if you're in Australia, you'll be on the same wavelength we are now. Cool thing is, I can throw that away. And then out of the box, just grab this do flacky thing, I'm not even sure what to call it, centre column replacement, I guess we'll call it. And just screw the base plate on as per normal like that. Chuck it where the center column would normally go. Get that a tighten. Chuck the ball head on top. And then, that is absolutely fantastic. I love this bloody idea. This is maybe 250 grams, 200 grams. That might seem like a lot, but when you're hiking through the Alps like I do quite a bit, I want a full functional tripod that's gonna be workable in all the elements, keep my camera gear sturdy as anything, and also lightweight. This has reduced the weight a little bit, Absolutely fantastic. I love that. Simple things I absolutely love. No bells and whistles, but it works. And it works goddamn well, which I love. Absolutely love that. But also, I want to know two things from you guys right now. First one, how much do you think this is worth? And secondly, how much would you pay for it? That is very, very interesting. So pause this right now and let me know how much you think it's worth and how much would you pay for it. 199 euros, that is right. 199 euros for the ball head and for the legs. I paid over 300 euros just for the legs of this man for a 190 go. I paid 180 euros just for the ball head. So I almost paid the same amount for the ball head. That's bloody expensive for the whole price of this tripod. There's one question that we cannot answer today. Five or six years ago, this still looks as good as when I first got out of the box. Maybe the sticker's a little bit, you know, skew with right now but will this last me four or five years and withstand all the elements? I'm talking like Iceland, Norway in the Arctic, Scotland next week. Is it gonna get battered and bruised and still last those conditions? That's what the most important thing is. But I want you guys to answer me two more questions right now. Would you buy this unit? Would you buy this unit? And secondly, in the comments below, I want you to let me know what you think the best bang for buck on the market is right now for carbon fiber, not aluminum, carbon fiber tripod. Because for me, this Genesis C3 carbon fiber tripod is your best bang for buck. I love it, I absolutely love it. From everything from top to bottom, the additional spikes, also this grip when it's freezing cold. I know it's carbon fiber, but just that extra ease of comfort when it's minus 15 outside, it's like so easy to use. Gloves you can use, I absolutely love it. I'll leave a link in the description for the Genesis website. If you do think about purchasing this tripod or it does suit your needs, I would love, I'd really appreciate when you purchase this tripod just to email Genesis directly and say, I watched Matthew Storer's review and he helped me purchase this because it suits my needs. I would really appreciate that because who knows one day, I'd love to get ambassador program through this product because they are making such a great product for me and my users. So hopefully one day I can become an ambassador and get 10, 15, 20% off to give to you guys. Giving back to you guys would make all my dreams come true. I'd absolutely love that. Because that's me done reviewing my personal best bang for buck carbon fiber tripod on the market right now. I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao. Damn it.